this is IBM Museum. So this video subject is going to be a little bit different. I have here something I picked up locally for just $20. Excellent condition. Um, it does have um, a couple things that I, uh, physical things I'm, I've tried to fix. Um, but I'll, I'll get into that uh, as I go through the video. Get this cover folded away. I got all the cover and everything else with the, um, with the unit. And it is a, an IBM Selectric uh, or Correcting Selectric 3. So this would have been right at the end of the uh, Selectric cycle. You know, I'll, I'll bring up a, a page to, to show that um, history. Let's kind of uncover things and I'll go through the different little pieces that were included. Um, so here's the, um, here's even the, the manual for it. Correcting Selectric 3 and Selectric 3 typewriters operating instructions. And we have the IBM bars there in the upper left hand corner. It gives a little bit of a layout, and I can probably go through and um, bump, bump in this webcam a lot. I can probably go through and um, scan this. The um, the uh, what I'm trying to repair is is actually this back uh, brace. It's it's gone through and it has a a little piece of plastic down here that goes through and kind of clicks into these detents and is able to um, be moved and normally as it's the typewriter with the cover on this would be this would be flat so it doesn't get um, hung up and broken off but um, there's the a view of the of the different um, areas of the typewriter it's got a table of contents and it's listed as copyright international business machines 1979 and the um, the reality is is it's uh, the selected three in fact let me go through and bring up the the page on that and I'll I'll go through and um, to uh, include a, this link in there. It's just a Wikipedia article and it covers the Selectric line. And uh, the first Selectric, the original, was released in uh, 1961. And get to the point where I can interact a little bit here and I'll, I'll scroll with what I have um, on showing up on my one of my screens as well and let me, let me scroll back to the top of where I can read so we have the original Selectric introduced on July 31st 1961 uh, industrial design is credited to influential American designer Elliot Noyes and uh, Noyes had worked on a number of design projects for IBM Prior to his work on the Selectric, he had been commissioned in 1956 by Thomas J. Watson Jr. to create IBM's first house style. Um, and um, these influential efforts, which Noyes collaborated with Paul Rand. Paul Rand is the artist that did the IBM that so-called, uh, is it like a rebus uh, design, I think, is what it's, um, but Paul Rand is the, uh, this Paul Rand that it references to is the artist for the, um, 
for the IBM graphic, and it's not, uh, not of course, the politician. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, reading a little bit further for the Selectric 2 remained unchanged until 1971 when the Selectric 2 was introduced. And um, the original design was therefore referred, thereafter referred to as the Selectric 1. And these machines use the same 88 character typing elements, even though they differed from each other in many respects. And it shows um, these, um, these units um, in the pictures. And the main thing of the Selectric was that, that um, type ball or the, the spherical uh, ball that had the characters um, that could be switched for changing fonts and things like that. And the original is, um, is with that uh, 88 character. And um, you had different fonts, courier, whatever, that you could go through and quickly switch those fonts. And the Selectric was the first model that it didn't have that moving carriage from side to side, but instead that type ball moved right and left on the, uh, on the, the typewriter. And so powering it on just to show, and then I can probably even, I was looking to where I was kind of wanting to zoom out in a way with the, my camcorder on the side there. And so that would be like this. Okay, and that's doing returns to go over to the, the left-hand side. And there's ways to go through and um, to get that to, to, um, to show how it's, it, you, you can see the, that type ball moving as it goes through and, uh, types those characters and see, there's why it's typed. And, you know, the ribbon still being good um, that the woman that had that, that used this. And um, it's got the, it's got the um, correcting ribbon, this orange, and then this is the uh, ink ribbon here. And um, so a view inside is, that's how it goes through and travels. And my dad actually, he he uh, sold these and he also did where the, there was maintenance on them with this office supply um, store. And um, even on this machine, there is identifier um, with the, um, a man that my, my, my dad employed and then later on, he went into his own business. There's a label back here with uh, the contact information for, for him, local number and toll-free number, uh, local address. He's passed on just like my dad. And today is, uh, is actually a, a, a year since my dad passed away as well. Um, I, I think of him when I... When I when I see these typewriters like this. And my dad was um, not very computer literate the way I set him up. I mean, for his ordering, he would go through and um, uh, I just have particular keys, uh, function keys that he could set. And I had Procom Plus, a old communications program that would connect into the, um, as a terminal into the, um, uh, a mainframe system that the you know that his, um, his supplier ran and um, where he would order things 
So he, he was, like me, a very a two-fingered typist, couldn't go through very quick. But one of the things that he could type rather quickly is now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. And that was just a particular sequence that he just learned to just type it out. And that was a quick way of testing uh, the typewriter just to make sure that it necessarily couldn't print all letters, but it could go through and and uh, and and type that out. So I'm sure he did that line on a lot of these a lot of these um, typewriters. And the um, as I talked about that moving platen and the um, and the ball because you know originally a typewriter was designed to have those those strike keys and that the the things that come up and you know hit the um, the ink um, uh, tape you know uh, to to impress to, to hit that and and hit uh, and transfer that to the paper and a, a typewriter keyboard was actually designed to slow people down. They didn't want those adjoining keys, you know, if you had common keys that would come up, if you, um, if you typed those adjacent letters, those commonly used letters, uh, they would actually, you'd hang up on strikers a lot of the time. So they split the common used keyboard, uh, the common used keys over the, the span of the keyboard. And the layout, that QWERTY layout just came into being um, as a um, something to that people got used to, even though it was designed to for slower typists. And there was later things that came out, the Dvorak keyboards and the even for the adaptation of, of people with disabilities had the use of one hand to be able to type, uh, be it left or right. Um, and they changed it out. And of course, there was a later on, some people would go through and um, really get into remapping their, their keyboards or even moving around the keycaps on their, on their computer keyboard um, to change around where the, where the keys were. And they had a just a, a, something that they'd learn a, a quicker way to, to type. And the selector typewriters really changed all that because they have that ball. They don't no longer have the, the strikers that come up and uh, hit the ink and, and paper to transfer that image. They just have that roller that, that moves around. And um, she even had a few more. This is the... Um, the case that the that the type balls came in and it's got contact information for IBM there and this little Velcro strip is moved I um, I'm wondering if there I don't think there's a magnet in there as well for over on the right hand side and here is one of those type balls out in the open and it has this little clip on top and I'll, I'll get into this because this is a little bit different for the marking from the earlier um, selectric units and you have the uh, arrow pointing for the orientation um, 12 is probably your font size you have the font listing this being old world for the look at some of those uh, look at some of those characters on there um, that's interesting I, I even should try swapping out a ball because uh, it is um, it is rather easy with these two units and um, after the um, after the font name, then you have that 96, and I'll explain that a little bit more. And you'll notice that the the lettering is in yellow for those. So to swap out one of the balls, and I don't think you had to lift the lid. Let's go through and power down. 
I'm trying to remember, and I'm sure, oh, and that's, that's adjusting for the, how hard of strike force it gives to the paper. And I'm not wanting to break anything, but these, you know, the plastic on this has just got to be so brittle. And we'll put that orientation in the right direction and pull it up and it clicks in place. And it's been probably ages. And then that top clip goes down. It's probably been ages since I last adjusted a uh, Selectric type ball. And um, of course we have all the controls there. I just wanted to go through, I'll put the, that type ball up. And that is a, uh, what was in here is um, 10 for the font size orator. And then it's got that 96 again. Uh, some of the other ones I have are the courier, probably very common. And that's being a 10 point font size. And again, that 96 in there, there's an extra correction ribbon. Um, script. I mean, that would be another interesting, um, looks, I guess maybe like a little bit like italics. And then I have, there's the prestige. And that's a 12 point font. Okay. And so looking at Okay. And you have your um, let's see if I can show I mean, and this, this positive mechanical feel, that developed things later on for IBM with keyboards. Um, I just wanted to show the, the shift in the lock. So you put, push down the, the shift and you can see that ball. Well, I guess it's, it's uh, you have to see it on the screen here. I, I have to show both it. it once or let me see I can easily do that so when I press the shift key you can it's uh, goes through and it moves that that ball in a particular and actually kind of rotates it effectively 180 degrees out for going down with the shift and then you have the the lock key above that and so that holds everything down and of course it's this would go through and type your capital letters and then to release it you're pressing the shift key and also of course you have the shift key over on the right hand side but let's go through for I thought this was more like a I'm a yeah I'm coming out with the the paper um, I guess that is kind of like a, that old uh, the lettering on that it's kind of that's kind of neat I want to get some other balls there uh, type balls that for this. Um, let's go to okay, and I should even move that guide. And you could set, you could go through, and you could set margins since that didn't have that plat, the platen that. That moved with 
and moves the, the paper. Okay. Just want to get where we could where it but just one of the many fonts. So let's go back to that page. I want to show that a little bit more of the Okay, and I'll go through and kind of keep track of where I'm creating. And they talk about the selectric typewriters, you know, eventually captured 75% of the U.S. market for electric typewriters used in business. And then at the end, IBM replaced the selectric line with the IBM Wheel Writer in 1984 and transferred the its typewriter business to the newly formed Lexmark in 1991. And the wheel writers, and I think there, there's links to that, and there's, um, I don't think they showed a, there's a wheel, and it's more of a, it has a, uh, a you could call it like a sun shape. It has your, uh, a center, and your, your characters are the rays on the outside um, around that center circle. And that center circle is where it held and moved. And then those uh, plastic layers to the, to the wheel rider. And it's the same concept. You could change wheels on those. And IBM found that that was even, a, I guess, probably a quicker mechanism of going through to where um, the uh, that will rotate and type out the letters. And the wheel writers, I mean, they had like a wheel printer, I think, on the PC line, where instead of you know, a keyboard on it, um, it had an interface, a printer interface, you know, uh, that could be used from a computer to print to that, uh, to that unit. And um, some of the more involved um, wheel riders even had uh, a separate screen. They had uh, diskette drives on them, the 720 KB diskette drives. Um, and it was almost like a little mini computer. And that was more of the format like of the old display riders that IBM had. So, um, and I have wheel riders uh, around as well. I, I can probably at some point do the same thing where I bring out those wheel riders and kind of go through a, um, a show of those. I don't know if I have all the manuals and all the nice old things um, that this unit had included with it. Um, so, as I said, the, the Selectric 3, that, that correcting version I have here, that was one of the last Selectrics um, that, um, that came out. They go over the correcting this electric two, the electric based machines with data storage with magnetic tape. Uh, I'll give the link to this because this is just um, it's it's history and it's it's kind of has some interesting things um, and replaying type material at. 12 to 15 characters per second. So you could go through and have a unit connected up to your Selectric and it would type out those. Um, Selectric Composer, even a magnetic card. I'm not going to go through and read all this, but I'll provide the link and people can look through this for the information because it is um, it's neat. Okay, and then they show the following font families. Okay, and I have some of those there, um, and these are the older font selections. Um, I want to get down to the Selectric 3 because it, and I guess for that copyright date, that was correct of saying in 1980, IBM introduced the Selectric 3, and we saw a copyright date of 1979 in that, in that operating manual and um, followed by several other Selectric models. Some of them word processors or typesetters instead of typewriters. But by then, the rest of this industry is caught up in IBM's new 
models, I guess it would help if I would scroll down to that section on the screen. There's the fonts I was talking about. And there's the information about the Selectric 3. And, um, but it didn't dominate the market the way that the original Selectric had. I mean, other manufacturers had adapted by that point. Um, so the Selectric 3 featured a 96 character element versus the previous 88 character element. And that's what that 96 on the ball and that yellow lettering um, identifies on those those newer type balls that the Selectric 3 used. And um, the 96 character elements can be identified by yellow printing on the top plastic surface and the legend 96, which always appears along with the font name and pitch. And the 96 and 88 character elements are mechanically incompatible with each other. And the 96 character elements were not available in, in as many fonts as the older 88 character types. I need to find out what other fonts are available beyond what I have. And it looks like that that one box, I mean, it does have the a possibility of about three other type balls in there. And, but just all that information about even getting down to the keyboard layout how that continued into the um, into what was the Model M keyboard, which is that standard 101, 102 key keyboard layout uh, that we're all familiar with now. Although the Model M being the, those beam springs or those being a very mechanical keyboard. Uh, with the tactile feedback that people like and that clickety sound, click, 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 click. And um, so they talk about the typewriter, you know, leading into that computer um, computer keyboard. They, um, in this section, keyboard layout. And they even have a little bit of detail of the um, slow motion of the Whiffle Tree Okay, it shows kind of what I was trying to show on the screen there. Huh. Oh, and I don't have audio. Well, I have audio to the headphones. So, I mean, you can go to this page. You can see what this guy's talking about. Um, wow. So, oh yeah, he goes through and he just, he'll describe it. He probably describes it a lot better than I do. <laughs> but that is um, what I have for this, um, this video. If you enjoyed the, uh, the content like this, you know, on what I presented here, I still have it playing on my on my headphones here for that little <laughs> that little thing, um, but you know that's the uh, IBM Selectric Three, just that end of that series of IBM Selectric typewriters. You just you know, if you enjoy this content, click on that like button, and by all means subscribe to my channel. I'll I, I can do a, a wheel writer typewriter uh, later on. Uh, just kind of an interesting thing to see a uh, the typewriter series that started 60 years ago, you know, 1961, and ending up in this model, probably being the the latest of that of that series. No idea what this costed new. Um, 
you know, like that, but I got it for $20 USD here locally um, and taken care of in pretty good condition. And I'll try and go through and repair the very brittle plastic for like that, that uh, paper guide that's on the back and, um, you know, treat this with care and kind of have it away. I don't expect to go using a whole bunch of it in reality or typing out anything. I, I'll go through and pull up the word processor on the computer. But um, interesting view of the past and how a lot of things like the computer keyboard originated and came in from, from typewriters. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And um, that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.